Hey, my name is Jim McLaren. Today we're going to talk about cataract surgery. This is the second video. The first one I post, a lot of people uh, wish me a speedy recovery. And if somebody asks me, can you keep us updated on the second surgery, on the cataract surgery? Today we're going to talk about the second cataract surgery. The first one was done June 28th, so about, I think about three weeks for the eye to heal. So the second part, is the red eye is going to be done on August the 2nd. I just got it done here just recently. I want to talk about it. So about a week before you have the operation, you start putting drops in your eye. And uh, I think two different drops a week before and about three days before. Uh, you cannot drive yourself in. Uh, if somebody has to drive you in to, for your operation, you cannot drive yourself home. So they have to drive you in. So the, uh, the night before, they tell you, do not eat anything uh, after 12 o'clock. In the morning, you can have maybe uh, tea or coffee, but no sugar or milk. So the, uh, because I was having laser surgery, they said 11.30, can you 11.30? Then they called me and they said, the laser machine that had, it was, uh, was uh, for some reason, had to be recalculated. So they said, delay on your time. So it says now 12.15. So when at 12.15, uh, they put drops in your eye. Uh, they put three drops in your eye. And then they tell you when you come in, uh, if you want to bring a sweater, and uh, bring uh, some slippers. Uh, they don't want you wearing your street uh, shoes in the pre-operating room. So bring slippers and then they make sure you be cold, you bring a sweater. So it went in, uh, they said, uh, they said, take your, your shoes off. And they had them uh, lined up like in front of the chair. So I knew there was five people in front of me, there's five sets of shoes in front of me there. So I knew there was out of the six one to go in. So when they bring you in the pre-operating room, bring you in there and then they put a hairnet on you uh, then they give you a couple more drops they put iodine around your eye and then they ask you do you have anything to eat last night I said no and nothing to eat nothing this morning so then it's like a production line then you're just waiting your turn the actual operation takes about seven minutes you're just waiting your turn to go into the operating room now the pre-operating room, they, they bring you, uh, they put you on a gurney, they put uh, three uh, probes on you, and they put a like a, a, a blood pressure machine on your, your arm. And then they uh, give you two more drops. This time they're freeze the eye. The first drop that about uh, stings a little bit, uh, and the eye is not even frozen. The second drop is to make sure your eye is frozen. Then they bring you in the operating room and the, the anesthesiologist is gonna. This time he didn't put it in my uh, my hand. He put it in my arm. To, so when you you start to feel the you feel comfortable, uh, and then you're aware of where you are, then the doctor says, "Okay, we're gonna do the laser part of this first. It's a very very bright light. Uh, they get you to open up your eye, then they put a piece of plastic oh, keep your eye open they say keep your eye open and so I'm gonna do this laser part of the surgery right now and uh, so that takes exactly two minutes to do that the light is very bright you don't feel anything you feel you'll see he says you'll feel pressure when he puts that plastic thing in you feel pressure on your eye but you don't feel anything and then uh, when he does the when he puts the lens in uh, a lot of uh, very bright light and a lot, you see a lot of liquid over your eye. And then uh, I knew uh, what was going to happen the second time, but it seemed to take longer than the first time. I don't know why it did. It was still under seven minutes. So when they bring you back out of the operation, they get you to sit up and then they, they call your wife to, to bring you home. Now you're, uh, you still know where you are, but they, they say, uh, We'll talk to your wife, give you instructions because some people tend to forget after the anesthesiologist. So uh, they tell you, they give you some more drops to put in uh, after the surgery, and then they say, Okay, uh, uh, come back uh, within about, about an hour and a half, come back in, and uh, you'll have a patch on your eye. So like, when you come out of your operation, you'll have a patch, you'll have tape over your eye. So your eye is open. You can see, but it's blurry because you can only see the tape over your eye. You can't really see anything. So you're definitely going to need sunglasses when you go back out. It's going to be bright. Your eye is still dilated. So 
It's going to be very bright, definitely sunglasses. So your wife's going to drive you home, and this is about less than an hour and a half. Because of the, uh, you had to calibrate the, uh, the laser machine, it was less time. The, the last time in the left eye was about, I would say, close to three hours after the operation I went in. So when you go in, they remove the patch from your eye, and then they ask you to read the chart. Now, the, when I did the left eye, I could read three of the four lines. But uh, the right eye, I can only read the top line, the letter E. I couldn't, it was so blurry. So maybe because of the time between the operating and then uh, coming back in to get the patch, I don't know. But he said, the eye is fine. It's going to be blurry for a couple of days. And he said, uh, just go home and make sure you wear the patch at night. So I went home and uh, I had something to eat. And, you know, I was feeling fine. Just, I felt tired. I felt fine, I wasn't sick or nothing. I had something to eat, I had something to drink. You know, at night you have to wear the eye patch at night over your eye. They don't want you scratching it. So uh, uh, I bought this tape. It's called uh, just like a, a paper tape. You put it on the shield first and then you put it on your over your eye. Tape it on. So this tape, when you take it off in the morning, it's not going to pull your skin. So that's. Now, if you're stuck, they suggest you use a frog tape or a painter's tape. If you're stuck, you don't have no tape at all in the house. Now, I do sleep with a, a CPAP mask, so it didn't interfere. The, uh, the patch didn't interfere with the CPAP mask. So the next morning, I uh, when I woke up, it was still very blurry. Uh, a little bit worried because it was the, the, the left eye was a lot the right eye had a cloud of cloudiness over it and i was kind of a little bit worried so i phoned them and the girl says that's very common uh each eye is different when they do the operation each eye is different it's very common to see that cloudiness or that blurriness over the eye it will get better during the day and it takes the uh, second day is usually the worst and you'll start to see a lot better so the doctor did check it before i left and he said everything is fine so during the day the cloudiness started actually go away and start seeing a lot better so getting more clear now you're going to notice now the, what about your you know like your reading glasses now uh, you're still going to need glasses to read because uh, both my lenses that they put in are for seeing far away so you're going to need uh, reading glasses now you can buy these cheaters what they call cheaters you can get them at your uh, at walmart you can get them at your your a lot of places you need cheater glasses so it, it's going to take about three weeks to be putting drops in your eyes uh in your eye for about three weeks after and i think there's one drop that you put right up to september the second so it takes about three weeks for your eye to heal so you uh when i come out they help me put my uh, shoes on they don't want you bending over uh, they don't want you lifting anything over 15 pounds the bending over the, the first, the second day, you'll be okay to bend over, but they don't want you bending over the, right after the operation. You can't uh, golf. You can't swim. You can't swim. You can't get your eye wet. Uh, even if you uh, take a sh shower, you have to protect the eye, keep the eye dry. I wear these uh, goggles, like diving goggles, when I take my shower. That, that helps a lot. Uh, can't keep the, you can't know, keep the eye dry. So a lot of restrictions when you have your cataract surgery once you have your cataracts removed as they it is once your eye starts to come around it, it's so much the colors are so more brilliant like that's uh, it's hard to explain you don't realize how much you couldn't see before the whites are whiter, uh, it's brighter, uh, it's like high definition. Can't believe how much better I can see now that I got the second eye done. And, and I'm seeing, which is to the left eye, I could see, I could drive without uh, wearing glasses. Just the left eye was so strong. Now the right eye is down. So, so the, as far as the optometrist goes, uh, you, can, uh, you can buy these cheaters, like you can get them where you go to the autometrist and she'll give you the precise, precise prescription. And so the reason why I want the, 
that if you see, you put these shoes on, you can read, but you look up and it's all blurry. So my glasses are going to, I'm going to get her to put the, I can read and then the top part is going to be, I can see. So I'm going to watch reading something and I can look up and watch television. So that's why I want to go back to the optometrist. So the only thing I would suggest that uh, I did a gun in the summertime, my daughter's got a, a swimming pool, was hot this year. And like uh, I had an operation uh, like five weeks between the operations. So I can't swim. Um, you can't uh, golf. There's lots of restrictions. Uh, you can't get the eye wet. So uh, I would suggest that you get it done in the wintertime and uh, uh, it would be a lot easier on you. So that's my eye surgeon. What I'm going to see at night when I drive, I heard my brother-in-law was telling me he had it done 10 years ago and he sees like stars from the oncoming headlights from the traffic. And he said, these are much improved lenses. Uh, you shouldn't see any of a difference. You'll just see a lot clearer. And exactly what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the road very clear. All the signs are very clear. I can see them very easily now. And the headlights uh, from the other cars seem to be brighter but there's no halo or any kind of stars around it. It's just uh, normal, very normal. Haven't driven in the rain yet. That was my complaint before. When I drove in the rain, it was hard to see the, the road when I had my cataracts. So when they called me up, they told me nothing, don't eat anything after midnight. And uh, you know, if, like clear fluids in the morning or coffee or tea, but no sugar or milk. Uh, there was one guy came after me and he said, do you have anything to eat? Said, oh, yeah, I had a couple of pieces of toast and that coffee and then I had soup at lunchtime. I said, oh, no, no, you can't, you can't operate. And the physiologist, uh, you know, so they refused to, they said, you have to reschedule, you can't do the operation. So he couldn't do it. So keep that in mind. Another thing, uh, a lot of people tell me, oh, I, uh, I don't remember nothing. Well, uh, the woman ahead of me was, uh, she had her second operation at the same time I had mine, and she said, oh, I remember you. Uh, you how did it go? I said, went good. How did it go for you? Oh, when they give me, uh, when they put me under, I, I pass out, so I woke up. I said, when's the operation? It's already done. So you can uh, pass out in the operation. A couple of things I want to mention to you. I like in the previous video on the when I did my right uh, left eye, and uh, I think I've done June twenty eighth, and right eye just done August the second here. Um, if you're gonna do it, uh, do it during the winter time. It's been hot this year. My daughter's got a swimming pool. You can't go swimming. You can't get your eye wet. So if you're gonna do it, do it in the winter time. Then you know you can't golf. And you can't cut the grass. So. Do it in the wintertime, that's my suggestion. The other suggestion I'm going to say to you is uh, when I had my cataract surgery, I was asking a lot of people about, you know, telling people about they're going to have cataract surgery. Well, I learned very quickly that uh, you tell people you're going to have cataracts, oh my God, uh, this person had cataract, oh, they couldn't see for, oh. So I learned a lesson, uh, you know, I, I didn't tell anybody I was going in for a cataract surgery, you know, I told my kids and they were all new. I didn't tell a lot of my friends that I had cataract surgery. They had bad stories. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're going to have cataract surgery, maybe just keep it to yourself because you're going to hear all kinds of stories that are not good. And you don't want to be worrying when you go in and get your cataract surgery. So hopefully my two videos on the cataract surgery has uh, put you at ease if you're going to have cataract surgery in the future. And uh, it's the most common operation now and uh, a lot easier to do now than years ago. And if you can afford it, get the laser part of it, it costs more money. And uh, get it done in the office with the surgeon. And uh, do it in the winter time, not in the summertime where you can't golf or you can't swim or you can't do a lot of, you can cut the grass. So there's two, two months out of the summer that you can't do anything because of your eye surgery or your cataract surgery. So please take care and uh, we'll see you in the next video.